Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. We are live in the Luminar booth, CES 2023. We are rocking the 6.5 on the road in the booth, and I'm here with my bestie, Daniel Newman. How you doing, buddy? Happy to be here. I'm near cars. I'm literally like inches from cars, and you know me. I get that close to vehicles. I get excited. My heart starts uh, pounding a little bit faster, and this is like all about the coolest future, next generation you know, driverless, safe, but fast. I love it. No, I know. It's great. And for your entertainment, Daniel, CES created an entire West Hall just for your automotive desires and dreams. But, hey, we have a guest here. We should probably get to the guest here. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. And we are very excited to welcome Martin from Volvo. How are you? Thank you very much, guys. Love being here. No, it's great. We're sitting right next to your baby over there, and uh, we'll make sure we get some uh, cuts of that uh, uh, in there. But can we talk a little bit first? What do you do for Volvo? So I lead uh, concept development. It's called product definition and also do partnerships. That means that I get to play with all the really cool stuff that you guys haven't seen yet. My God, you have like the best job on the planet. I thought I had the best job on the planet, which is I deliver almost nothing and have no accountability as an industry analyst. That does sound fun. Yeah. No, it is. No, we should trade cards after this. Hey, but... hey, don't undersell. The, what do we work with? 150 of the world's most exciting tech companies and try to pay attention to everything they do and then make it make sense to the whole world. It It's not as easy as it sounds. You just make it look easy, Pat. Just like this beautiful EX90 over here. They kind of made this whole idea of electrifying and then creating a car that could go fully autonomous, but making it available in mass at scale in 2023. They made it look easy, um, you know, which it definitely is not. So let's let's get Martin started here. Um, I want to just get your with a, someone that does a job like yours. Looking at the big picture of what's ahead for automotive in 2023, we're here at CES. What do you see, Martin? I would actually say that it's a, it's a year or will be a year of a bit of a reality check. I think that, you know, not to sound boring, but I think it is. I think we've had a few years with, you know, autonomous driving is, is very, very almost there. And uh, with um, everybody has augmented reality hubs and 3D displays and so on. And this is probably a year of a bit more of saying that, okay, let's let's make sure it works first. And in our case, it's more about, okay, first and foremost, we're going to make a car that is super, super safe and super convenient. It will be autonomous, but we're going to make sure it's safe first. God, I love the reality check. And it's funny, every year, press and they always ask me, hey, what can we expect for CES this year? And I always vacillate between a visionary show, which... Big promises are made. And by the way, I think I remember six or seven years ago, companies making promises about something that was going to happen four years ago that still hasn't happened yet. So it is great that we're in reality time. Uh, what um, what are your specific priorities for the year right now? I mean, obviously, you get this sexy beast, the X90 out, but there, I'm sure there's a lot more going on than that. That's the official descriptor, sexy beast. No, but I, I, you're spot on. I mean, number one thing is we're going to get this thing into production and into cus customer hands. That is the number one priority. And then, uh, again, you know, part of my job is looking maybe three or four or five years ahead. And, you know, what, what, what is the next step after this? Uh, yeah. All right. So let's open the box. It's CES 2023. Again, we have this car here. But kind of what are the big things that Volvo is unveiling? Is it is it? Beyond the X90, or is this the, is this it? And and by the way, it is not the right word. <laughs> Tell us about it. Yeah. Okay. So this is the the EX90 is our new full electric SUV. And what's super cool about this car is that it's built to be autonomous, and it has all the capabilities. It has redundant power, redundant steering, it has re redundant compute, it has this amazing luminar lidar, it has cameras, radars, and whatnot to be autonomous. Uh, that's a huge step for us. It's electric, it's autonomous. A third thing that I would say that is really impressive with this car is, so again, it is built with a core compute system. It is one of the first really software-defined vehicles. I know we love talking about software in the, in the car industry, and we're not that great at it. This is the first step to actually having a car that does improve over time, you know, with new software, new functions over the air to it. 
Well, it's super exciting. I mean, I, I think there's no debate on what consumers want, right? And I think the smartphone kind of set the bar for for a lot of other Absolutely. devices out there. And they want it to get better over time, like you said. Uh, and they're very willing to, to make upgrades on a software basis to get something even better down the road. And I tell you, if I look at the history of technology back 100 years, things don't get better over time. And I know there's also a sustainability angle here of not always having to buy something brand new to get uh, to get this new feature. But it's taken us a long time to get here. A lot of sh uh, puts, a lot of takes, uh, some false starts. But I, I think we're actually here. And I do remember six or seven years ago sitting here saying, hey, you're not going to get full autonomy of the smartphone chip. Because that's what we were talking about six or seven years ago, and I believe none of it, and it ended up being true. But you have essentially a supercomputer in your system, don't you? In fact, redundant ones. Yeah, that's right. But but I think, I mean, we're also putting power into the car in terms of compute, not only for the features that we will be available at launch, but we're kind of preparing for this growth in software that we think that customers will expect, frankly, because, you know, as you say yourself, uh, your iPhone doesn't really do much when you take it out of the box. It's the software and the things that you put on it. That's what really brings customer value. And I, I think, you know, the car industry has to move in that direction. There, there's no alternative. So for decades, uh, Volvo has been a hallmark for safety. And, and design, right? It, well, design came after the hallmark of it, but come on, you have to admit it used to be safety. Now it's safety and design. Uh, and part of safety is there's a lot of ways you can cut that, but millions of lives are lost on the road each year. And it seems like we need to do something about it. And we can do something about this. And that gets me to your partnership with Luminar. We're in Luminar's booth right now. What is the relationship between uh, the two companies? Obviously, Nice Luminar uh, system, uh, elegantly placed on the top of the X90. Yeah, so so there. I, so I would put, let's say it like this: the worst kept secret of the industry, I think, is that car manufacturers were not that great at building software. I mean, if you look at some of the solutions out there, out of they're respect, not awesome. I'm not going to nod my right. head. Okay, so I like, nodded. Yeah, yeah, right. And that, so there's there's different approaches to solving that problem. Either you say that okay, we we built hardware and integrated hardware components into our cars for a hundred years. So let's do the same thing with software. So we buy one software piece from Japan and one from China, and then we put it together, and you know, uh, or the other approach is to say okay, we're going to build all the software ourselves. That's the only way we're going to make it work. From what we're taking a third approach here. And that is that to actually work with partners. And instead of saying, telling Luminar, okay, we want a LiDAR, it's gonna have these six specs and so on. We actually talk to them, okay, about this vision, about zero collisions, about cars that don't crash. And we talk about, okay, so how can we actually achieve that? Yeah, and you know, another thing that I thought about when we were talking offline, you were sort of explaining that you have the Luminar LiDAR, you were explaining all the the radar that you have in the vehicle, the camera for vision that you have. Of course, you have a partnership with NVIDIA as well on uh, you know, the Orin and the other software. Why, you know, just building on Pat's question a little bit, we all know another company that's, you know, really touting uh, autonomous and has gone all in on camera. You as the guy that's helping drive the future and the innovation, why are you choosing all these multiple sensors? Why is that the right thing? Yeah, because... Uh... Every sensor is wrong, you know, it, it's always going to be wrong. Even the LiDAR will be wrong. I mean, you can look at this picture. There are errors in this picture as well. So the more different kind of sensors you have, the more likely you are to be right. If you see, you know, any, any magic show that will show you a card trick, they can easily fool you with the card trick. So that, that tricks your eyes. If I tell you that, okay, now keep your hand on the car, Let's see how easy it's going to trick you down. Same thing here. The more sensors, the better. By the way, I totally agree with you. I just wanted to make you say it. So just so you know. No, it just it doesn't. It... Wasn't there a company that said they were going to do a cross-country autonomous drive? Uh, there was. It still hasn't happened yet. And it hasn't. 
okay. I like I like the perspective of safety and redundancy. Um, we know this from all kinds of other technologies where, you know, it's like, could you imagine running your entire company in the cloud and only having one instance yeah. and not, and you know, it's the same kind of thing. Like you, and this is even more severe because it's life and death in many cases about getting it right. So good place to end is what is next for autonomy? Where does this go from here? I mean, if, eventually we will have cars we will only have cars to drive themselves and i know you want to drive but maybe you can drive on a car on a track or something like that because you know to be honest today uh, on a typical day 100 americans die in traffic i mean that's that's not sustainable we can't keep doing that right? and we know that about 90 percent of accidents are caused by human errors so yeah we need to move to autonomy uh, eventually uh, all the time, everywhere. I mean, it's funny if he didn't have something to follow up with, but he wouldn't have anything to do, right? So <laughs> that's a good question. Well, but I know you can't divulge all your secrets, but uh, one thing that I learned today, and as industry analysts, we're supposed to know everything, I didn't know that this could be fully autonomous. I think that's 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 pretty cool. Have you pegged a date? or year when it could be fully autonomous? What is What are the variables and dependencies? I mean, we, yeah, so we uh, we will put the car in the market first and we will use consumer cars to validate the function to make sure that it's absolutely safe before we offer it as a function. That's why we're not telling you exact date because you know we, we, we're not gonna wanna be held to that date. We're gonna wait until it's safe, even if that means waiting for revenue, if we will. Right. So, um, and, and, and that's part of the uh, answer. And we're starting in California with the rollout. We're going to start with uh, highways. Uh, but even before the car is autonomous and even where it's not autonomous, this is going to be the safest car out there. And it's going to have the best, you know, the driver support systems and, and, you know, what you can get as well. Well, congratulations on the launch of the X90. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. I think you guys are heading in the right direction. Very exciting for Volvo, very exciting for Luminar. And uh, Pat, I'm sure we could both speak uh, for, I can speak for you when I say, we're both looking forward to seeing how all of this evolves. So Martin, thanks so much for joining us here. Thank you very much, guys. All right, everybody, for the 6.5 on the road at CES 2023, we're in the West Hall. We're around all the cool mobility and automotive technologies, and we were here with Volvo. So appreciate you tuning in. Hit that subscribe button. Watch all the other episodes from the show floor here, as well as our other interviews that we do with hundreds of the most prolific tech executives in the world. For Patrick, for myself, though, time to say goodbye. We'll see you all later.